Coming up, it's the double dip with the weekend tip off for the Brooklyn Nets taking on the Crosstown Knicks two times this weekend. Will it be the story of Mikhail Bridges' revenge? A reminder that Sean Marks and the Nets made all the right decisions this past offseason. We dive in next. You are locked on Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. He's Doug Norrie. I'm Adam Marbrecht. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms and let you know that you can continue to win big on FanDuel all season long. New customers can place just a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. And Doug, finally, face-to-face -face with our past as Mikhail Bridges and the Knicks will host the Nets two times starting Friday night and again on Sunday. Where do we stand on, on, on meeting back up with old friend Mikhail? Well, to start, I mean, the Nets are only one back in the loss column from the Knicks right now, which I'm sure, um, I mean, Nets fans can feel whichever way about it. I'm sure team. that's not where, I'm sure that's not where Knicks fans saw it going uh, to start the season, uh, to, to be their five and six, Nets are five and seven, and they meet in the NBA Cup, uh, the first game for the Nets uh, in the in, in the in-season tournament piece. So fun night, and just in terms of overall basketball, from the Mikhail Bridges side, uh, look, uh, you know, there's just no world where the Knicks fans i'm sure nicks folks have thought that this is working out for them like right he started off the season 30 percent from three he's getting torched on defense and that's not even just me saying it as like some you know you know feel bad fan or something like that no. i've read multiple takes of like high level nba nate duncan said it the other day and he's not a nets or nicks fan um but is like a total total basketball expert and he was like oh yeah patrick williams just blew by mikhail bridges like there's been a massive regression in his on-ball defense, the thing that, you know, you probably paid for. So, you know, not wishing ill will on anybody here, but at the same yeah. time, when you think about whether the Nets got out from underneath the Mikhail Bridges sort of um, era on the right note in terms of just getting assets back, there's no, it do, as we start the season, there's nothing to make you think that the Nets did something wrong here, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, where it'll end up how it ends up for the Knicks, but to start, bridges it's not like bridges has like crazy outperformed this this uh this trade no and it's interesting too because to your point i get a little bit into it maybe later on about where the knicks stand as a team and how that feels for the brooklyn nets we know it has implications around draft odds and all these future picks coming in for brooklyn but it, it was funny to me this off season the way even high level basketball minds talked about the addition of mikhail bridges to the new york knicks relative to what he was in brooklyn and we've talked we've had this discussion before what does a player look like or how is the coverage on him when he plays for, hey, I hate to break it to you, all the Nets fans know it, a meaningless ba basketball team, right? The Nets were not particularly relevant during his time there. Now, he was being held up as the face of that trade package with Kevin Durant and the future going forward. But we watched the games and said, hey, same thing we, we heard about him coming from Phoenix. He's a really good high-level defender. That's the beauty of him. He takes those most difficult assignments away from maybe your star players and makes their life easier on that end of the floor. In Brooklyn, it did not look to be the case. And we often some would point to, well, if you have superstars ahead of them, maybe it makes a difference. Now with New York, you have Cat there. Obviously, you also have other players of high caliber. But I think it's just the reality maybe of where Mikhail Bridges' defensive game is. And that seemed to have been a fluid perception from Phoenix, then to Brooklyn, and then now to New York, it looks far more like he is a guy that we saw last season. And this isn't a knock. We liked him when he was here, but he's not a particularly big player. He's not a very quick player. He has some length in terms of his reach. But beyond that, it's hard for him to stay in front of assignments. It's hard for him to out physical assignments. And that's going to be tricky on a night overnight basis when you're playing on a team like the Knicks who have real championship aspirations and are depending on you in a key kind of three and D wing role. Yeah. You know, it's a weird spot to be in for them. I, again, it's still early on. Like we're 12, you know, they're 13 games into the season. This is not the end of the year. I, like I'm always hesitant to make big proclamations around where things are going to end up because 
everything's just different in six months. Like name any part of your life. Things are usually just different six months later than they are now. So um, where this ends up with Bridges is is unclear and where the Knicks end up is unclear too. Like there's just so many different things that can happen. But I guess like what we're saying is early on, right? When the Knicks give up all those picks, was it five, six? How many picks was it? I can't remember. Um, can be six. Yeah, five, six yeah, essentially. Six. Right. So they give up all the picks and – because they're making like these championship moves. Great. That helps the Nets. I mean, we've said many times that the, the best thing that, that Mikhail Bridges ever did as a net was stay friends with Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. <laughs> like that was easily, easily the the biggest win that the Nets had was staying friends with the, and I guess Dante before he got traded, the, easily the biggest win of the whole thing was just staying friends with his boys and, and then landing in the same city because it helped facilitate this trade package that I think most people thought even at the time, was probably a slight overpay, but fine. You're getting better. The Knicks are in a championship window. You try to get better. Right. I'm all for those kinds of moves. But, you know, when you start the season, you know, there's concerns about Bridges in the offseason that he changed his shot. If you watched it early on, there was like he, his his shot just looked different, right? And he's gone through some streakiness here. But again, starting the year off, shooting six more than six three-point attempts per game at 30%. That's bad for a wing, for a three and D wing, right? So if you're not getting the D, right, in terms of the defense, and you're not getting the three because you can't hit the shots, then you are in trouble. And there's this other part of his game, and we kind of saw this last year too. And by the way, I'm only referencing this too and how many picks a team gives up to. Everything's relative to price and whatever else, right? You'll take Mikhail Bridges on your team. Everyone would. We're only talking about in terms of like what you give up to get him. We saw this last year happen with him, um, and it was like concerning, which was he – like he wants to be an on ball guy, but then you're not like getting to the line tons, right? His first time in Brooklyn, he got to the line almost seven, six and a half times per game. Last year, it fell to 3.9 times per game in the, more minutes than the, than his previous stint with the year before at Brooklyn. Now he's one free throw attempt in 38 minutes. So four, uh, so three and change more minutes per game because he's playing a ton. The shot is are down. That's fine. You play with Brunson and Cat and guys like that. It's going to happen. And he gets to the line one time a game. He's just a corner shooter. That's not hitting threes. Yeah. And not playing defense. Like that's a tough sell for what the Knicks gave up to get them. And it sounds a little victory lappy here, but it's it's mostly just like painting the picture of why the Nets made the right the easily the right choice here. Like oh, of course. so easy, so clearly the right choice. And it's just kind of just playing out that way. And by the way, at the time, like we were blown away when it was announced, that trade and the trade oh, yeah. package and what the Nets got back. So it, it, to your point, victory lap, you will know, but it is just, hey, when an organization that has had a hard time at times making the right decisions at the right time to walk into an offseason where it didn't seem like that was necessarily on the table, then have it all come together pretty quickly and have Sean Marks go, sure, that sounds good, and this is all speculative, but we'll take almost everything you got because you knew you had a team that desperately wanted to pair him in with Jalen Brunson and form that group. Coming up here in a second, the offensive end of the game that Doug spoke to there, on-ball creation. This is something else that I thought the NBA at large was grossly overvaluing Mikhail Bridges on. And if you watch games throughout last season with Brooklyn, could have seen the writing on the wall for that skill set. We'll talk about that and also where those draft picks stand coming up here in just one moment. All right, before we get to that, tell you about friends over at FanDuel. We're getting it on the NFL and NBA action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers, you bet $5, get $150 in bonus bets. If you win, the FanDuel Sportsbook app is going to give you everything you need to place those live bets or pregame bets uh, on the NFL, in the NBA. It's all in one place. If you head on over to FanDuel right now, you got the Brooklyn Nets plus nine and a half against mm -hmm. the Knicks uh, heading into MSG. Again, look, the Nets, they, they didn't cover the other night against the Celtics. Uh, we'll take, or, you know, we, we won't take it, but they're still one of the best teams against the spread this year. Can it get, get those nine and a half points heading into MSG? You think the Nets are going to be pretty up for this game, although you have to imagine the Knicks are probably feeling it too, based on all the things we're talking about, just some of what you can get in on over on FanDuel. Like I said, you can get $150 in bonus bets if you win that first $5 real money bet. Join and visit FanDuel.com today. We get started with, with those bets, and that's on FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. All right, so as we continue today's Locked On Nets episode, talking about the two-time matchups that we'll have here for the Nets going up against the Knicks. We'll take on Friday night and also on Sunday, and we'll find out. We talked about this is the cap-off of the very difficult seven-game stretch, and basically, to Doug and, and, and my point on where we thought this team would be, two and five. So that means split this series over the weekend with the Knicks, and you get to where we thought they were going to be coming out of these games. 
The other, you know, you mentioned at the top as well, a couple of things before I want to get back into Mikhail for a second, just that where the Knicks are is also from a record standpoint where the Nets are such a factor in inside of the perception of this deal or this trade. It's not, it's not, this isn't just on Mikhail Bridges, by the way, like it's also just the continuity and you go and make the additional move for cat. Now you bring him in now, Jalen Brunson who spiked last year and everyone was like, Oh my God, the deal and how they got him from Dallas. What an incredible. Okay. Incredible pause, maybe like still a really, really good player, but if he's not going to play out of his mind to superstar caliber, <laughs> This is the part where I have relief based on what we're oh, yeah. covering uh, watching the Brooklyn Nets as opposed to the Knicks. Because when you have all those expectations, we went through this with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Every game and every player and every moment, you are just drilling down and analyzing and overanalyzing it because it does mean success or failure. It does mean championship or not. And it's to me, it's agonizing to be a Knicks fan right now or to be someone like Knicks and have to watch this team level because they seem miles away from that spot right now again like when you trade for this guy to sort of like at the time when they did it when you act you want him to probably be like something like a number two next to brunson right yes. um you know now it go you know it gets pushed down the chain a little bit once you get cat you get cat in the mix because he's just such a better offensive creator say whatever you want about cat you know on the defensive end and they're getting kind of slaughtered on the in the interior with him at center but overall he's still like you know a very high level offensive threat um, so maybe you push bridges to the three. The thing is, again, when you give up this much stuff, you are kind of buying on the and bridge has a sick contract, too. So you pay a little bit for that also. But um, you you're buying on the idea that's like, hey, maybe you're like a one B. Maybe it, it didn't work when you were a one A here in, in right, Brooklyn. Right. And maybe you were getting too many of these like high level wing matchups, which we saw him get completely, completely crushed by all season long last year. Um and so you're like, okay, well, maybe if the load gets taken off a little bit because Brunson draws more defensive attention and now you have Cat, now it's going to be something else. Except theoretically, this stuff should be easier, but it looks like it's harder. And so uh, I'm not sure if he's headed toward the age curve. You know, one thing we really worried about at, at the time when we were talking about like sort of where the Nets should land on um, – on what to do with him going forward, right? You know, because all the talk was, are they going to build around him? By the way, a lot of that, so much of that smoke blowing because you're not going to be like, hey, we can, we're trying to trade this guy the first chance we get. Of course, they're not going <laughs> to say that. Like that. Um, yeah. But one major concern we have, one major concern was, yeah, he's 28, but in basketball life, he's like 32. He's played so many minutes. Yep. That he, he was only behind Tatum and like Jalen Brown. I think it was actually only Tatum for a while in terms of just total NBA minutes over the last five or six years. Because he played, you know, a ton of playoff minutes. He played every single game. He just has a million miles on him right now. And when that's the case, you know, you know, longer college career too. Like he's played a lot of minutes, and we always just were so hesitant. We're like, hey, how is this going to age? This guy's been on the court a ton. So at some point, the tread just starts coming off the tires. It's not anti him. It's just you know, pro what happens to people's bodies. Like it just this is what happens, yeah. and so. I wonder if we're starting to see some of this too. We always thought, oh, is he getting tired? He played the, you know, he played not the Olympic, he played the FIBA stuff over the summer, the two summers ago. The guy's just played so much. And at some point, like you just can't keep running. I don't know. Like, so is it surprising to see a regression on some of these rate stats? Not really when you start to factor in like everything else for his entire career. The guy, hey, Iron Man is amazing. And at some point, the bill, the, the bill comes due, and I, at some point, and we're, maybe we're seeing that. And, and, and the start of his career again, it's not, it's not to knock McHale or the, the him, his career, him as a player is not LeBron James, is not Nikola Jokic, right? So there's a difference too about even if you are an Ironman, if you're one of those players who always plays every single game or every single minute, and then you're also getting maximum value out of that. This is a guy that has maximized his value by always being available, right, and always being able to be on the court since 2019. Like that, that's, a, that's a great Sorry, thing. Go ahead. I just said that's yeah, right. I was just yeah, 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 yeah. Like just yeah, quick the quick PSA here because this is not the version of it which we see all the time, especially after any trade. We talked about this, I think, last week. I think Mikhail Bridges is great. I, I I hope that he does well. I hope that the Knicks overall end up giving us a better draft pick, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We all get that stuff, but like there's no ill will here around this. And we talk about the same thing when we talk about Cam Thomas on the Nets or Ben Simmons when we talk about him when it's almost 99% negative con conversation around him. It's not because we have a vendetta against him. It's because from a basketball standpoint, from an injury standpoint, this is what it looks like. And 
just to uh, clarify it, since 2018-19, only DeMar DeRozan has played more total minutes than Mikhail Bridges. Mikhail, though, unlike, say, DeMar, has played 447 games. Right behind Mikhail is Jason Tatum, 446. Even the Joker, 457. 485 games, averaging almost 33 minutes. And if you think that even all the minutes, and it's pretty close, and some players have played more than him, but he's never taking the night off. And then you throw in also the Olympics, the FIBA, all that stuff. It just, it does keep piling up. So where he is from a wear and tear standpoint certainly plays a factor here. The only other thing that I wanted to, we started to say there, the offensive game and the on-ball creation. This was another one that I heard about where this team is right now for New York and that, you know, and then you also have, you just need someone else to step up offensively as an on-ball creator. And they've pointed to Mikhail to be that guy. Now, again, when the assignments are easier because they're more worried about better players, it does make that task that much easier for you. But we saw last season when Mikhail wanted to do it, almost was putting too much pressure on himself to try to go and create on ball. It made what we thought was a really sound ball handler, a really good decision maker. It made him look sloppy. It made him look careless. It made him look like a guy that was trying to play above his skill set. So I, that would be my other concern. I don't know. You know, we're <laughs> listing the concerns for New York Knicks fans. It's just when you overslot a player, and we've done this too with Ben Simmons. Hey, take away the contract. Let's just talk about the player, right? Don't worry about the money right now. Where would you be on him? If you're a Knicks fan, it's almost impossible to sit there and say, six first round picks. You need to be more. You need to, because that's what we gave up for you. It's the equivalent of trading for a Kevin Durant. It's the equivalent of trading for a superstar talent that is going to vault you into serious championship contention. And I, that part of it, it's not Mikhail's fault that the Knicks gave all that up, but that is going to follow him for his entire Knicks career and how he performs and how the team performs overall. Oh, uh, how can it not? How can it not? Yeah, I mean, this is brutal. like, you know, you know, part of being a sports fan is playing the long game here. And again, I would make these moves if I was the Knicks. You have very few chances to, to totally go for it. And I'm always pro team. Like, I think the Nuggets have done this the wrong way. It's like, they're sending guys out. Like, there's not paying for guys like KCP. You're like, you have a, such a short window to win with, with Joker. Like, you we'll have Joker, Russell you have Murray, West. you have these guys. You have a short window. Overpay, go into the tax, and just go for it. Because one day these guys aren't going to play anymore, and you aren't going to yeah. have that chance. And so I'm always for teams overpaying if they think that that's going to get them to the mountaintop. And I think that's what the Knicks did here. So I, I, I'm not, uh, not a fan of the moves. I think they're correct, uh, mostly. And, they, and, and by the way, there's only so many players available to go get. Like not every team sure. is just trading dudes off their team that can actually help you win. So from a from a fundamental standpoint, it makes total sense. Sometimes though, sometimes you just kind of roll snake eyes on what and how much you give and how much you get, and that could. I'm, I'm it's too early to say, but it sure hasn't looked any different than that to start the season. Coming up here in a second, I'll use Doug Norrie's key phrase against himself, keeping the powder dry when you talk about trades like these, plus our picks for the game and a review of where all that draft capital stands. We'll do that to close things out in just one moment. All right, with Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.25% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on IRA account contributions. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at RobinhoodGold.com or Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risks, rate and pay change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold LLC. All right, so as we close out today's Locked on Nets episode, talking about, obviously, Mikhail Bridges, talking about these two teams coming back together. I mentioned there uh, before the break, keeping the powder dry. So the one spot where I would push back on it, because we, we've talked about big deals like this or big moves before in the past, and we said this about the James Harden trade for the Nets. Will you make that a 1,000 times out of a 1,000? It doesn't matter that it all didn't work out after. That player of that caliber, you go and you get to try to cement the championship opportunity. When you hear the way Milwaukee was talking early in the year, whether or not it happens ultimately, when you've heard the whispers for the last season and a half that a player like Giannis may come onto the market, if you're in New York, I, I, you, you know, there's going to be a little bit. I'm sure in those first few weeks when those interviews were happening and, and Giannis was making those comments to the media, there's no way that the entire Knicks organization wasn't going, oh, come on now. 
Come on now. Don't not not now. Don't don't have this player of this caliber come out and be available now because we gave away six of our key assets that would help us acquire him in a trade for a player that we like and that can improve us, but is by no stretch of the imagination that caliber of player. So I, I would not, you know, push back, but just keep spending all the assets and going all in always is a good move when you think you have the window. But where you spend it really matters. And I think the Knicks are probably in those muddy waters of Obviously, Mikhail, a bit of an overpay. And then even the cat trade, just saying, did we end up going all in with the right group of guys here? Or did we go all in? And if you compare this to the Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Brooklyn Nets roster, you say, oh, no, I would take the I would take the Nets roster in that era every single day of the week. So I think when and where you spend all of those assets to go all in really does matter. And the Knicks could be could be facing a bit of a downturn here, although very long season and we're not making any referendums on the success or failure. Yeah, I mean, the honest thing, I hear you. I also think that like the the Buck season has started off worse than any even reasonable person could imagine. Of course, right? like, like, just like, as an example, right? Like, yeah, and I so I understand. Um, you know, starting them four and eight and having it look like there's like real, real pro, and they got real lucky to even get out with a win the other night. Giannis had to score like a hundred points to just get them out. It's like he scored it was so ridiculous against uh, Detroit, yeah. but um, the. But so I get what you're saying. And, you know, if you if you, we subscribe to the, oh, someone will always be available camp. I mean, it's probably true, but also you just have to take deals when they're available to you also. Right. Like, hey, Bridges is just available here. We have our guys want them like we have to go get them. So, yeah, yeah, I, you're, you're, I, I agree there. with you. I agree with you that there's always probably a deal to make. Probably. Um, knowing what it's going to be is hard to predict and, sure. you, know, you know, for sure, like knowing that you're going to be able to do it is hard also. And so that's the only piece I would push back on the, on the honest thing. And I agree with you. You're like, oh yeah, the, if they, you know, piling all these assets together instead of what they did for Kat and Mikhail and just going and get Giannis, like, is that a world right. that they would probably rather live in? I mean, probably, but it's hard to really, it's hard to be. I, I hate being results based around stuff like that, uh, and you know that. I mean, some other people yeah, yeah. don't. I I'm always like process, 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 and the results are what they are. And it's a weird way to live through life sometimes because you have to just look at the results, and they aren't what you want. So they are, at times they aren't what you want, but it's the only way to sort of just like have a sustainable practice, like just in life. But yeah, and I'm with you. Yes, would they be honest be better? Uh, I mean, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. And and yeah, and it, it, this is a little results oriented with where they are currently. And I, I just, you know, process, process, process. I think and this is what I find funny, man. And we can talk about this more over the course of the season, but just it's always funny. I looked at the Knicks who prior to, to making these recent decisions did what we were, always wanted the Nets to do. Which is just, hey, take it easy for a couple of years. Just relax for a minute. Wait for, uh, you know, a strike while the iron is hot moment with Jalen Brunson and Dallas undervaluing him draft successfully, make kind of margin trades and build up the stability of your roster. So when the opportunity comes, you have to drop them in. I, we just didn't know that Mikhail Bridges and Cat were going to be, Carl Anthony Towns, were going to be those players that you dropped in. That being said, let's just, before we give our picks for this game and get out of here today, remind everybody that, one, first of all, in the Mikhail Bridges trade, because we said this earlier, they ended up getting back the unprotected first round in 25, the unprotected 27 first, the unprotected 29 first, the unprotected 2031 first, also an unprotected swap in 2028, a top four protected uh, pick from the Bucks 2025. We'll talk about that in a second. And then they had a, a second round pick come in in 2025 as well. 2026 pick went out. Some bodies swapped around the board, but nothing particularly of consequence there. Why does it all matter? Doug just brought up the Milwaukee Bucks. Guess what? Snuck out that win? Fantastic, because they're now sixth on Tankathon in draft odds. That means it's our pick now. No more top four protected there. And then you go down the list. You see the Nets now sit 15th just outside of the lottery odds at five and seven. And then right there at 19 is going to be New York at the current moment coming over to the, to the Nets there with that pick as well. So they're sitting there with three top 20 picks. And, I, I you know, you probably have to hedge yourself and accept that Milwaukee is going to keep grinding this thing out and pull themselves further from, yeah. you know, the top. So you got to try to you know split the difference for yourself and get you there. But right now, it's going pretty well for the Nets from a pick perspective, all things considered. They can always, quote unquote, write their own ship to the bottom. But I, my only concern that's interesting coming out of these next two games is probably, and we'll talk about this more in depth, you look at the top of that board with Toronto at 2-10 and 10 and even Philadelphia 2-9 and nine and Washington 2-8, at eight, the Nets are dancing. They're dancing in the waters of, 
are we get is the margin is the gap getting too wide here? But that can all turn around if you lose these two games. It can all turn around if you go three and six over a nine game stretch. So I'm not worried about it, but the, the numbers start to look a little more contrasting, especially with a team like Toronto, even if some of these other picks coming in look good right now. Yeah, and they have the tw- they have the, the the Suns pick too. So it's like Yeah, that's um, like 26th uh, in the first round there right now. Yeah, I think what you're going to we're going to see is this will probably all fall. My here's my guess. This is all going to fall into basically the close to the range we thought it was going to be this season. Maybe the Nets aren't as locked into the top 3 picks as we thought they might be or top 5 picks as we thought they might be. Um but I also think that the Bucs are probably going to have a slightly better pick than we thought that was going to be. I think the, and yeah, then yeah, I think the yeah. Knicks are going to end up, the, the Knicks will probably end up basically where we thought. And the Suns look really good as long as KD, as long as everyone can stay healthy, that team looks really good. So yeah. I think in the wash, my guess is like something, something along the lines of slightly worse odds at the top for the Nets than we thought at the beginning, and but slightly better on the Bucs pick. Be when it's yeah, all top said twenty, maybe for the Bucks pick as opposed to mid twenties, something like something like that. I think that feels right. I mean, they have real problems. Like they have, and they have no room for and error. no way to improve. Uh, yeah, yeah, like they have no room for error. They can't get Middleton healthy. Dame's already out a game. Yet they have to have Giannis playing a million minutes, um, in order to just even squeak by in overtime against teams like the Pistons, yeah. and they're all they and they're still the records bad. So I think that like they're. They have a harder landing, maybe, than some of these other. I think I think the Knicks have like a soft landing. I think the Knicks are still very talented. Like they're going to be good yes. by the end yes. of the season. That's my yes. strong suspicion. And I think the Nets will lose more games than they've won at the beginning of the season. Um, so I think it's going to end up being this is what everyone forgets about too. I, we'll get out of here in a sec, but I mean, four draft picks in one draft. Like this team's gonna look so different next year. Four four mm-hmm. first round picks. Uh, you know, it, the Nets have never done this. The Nets went like. It took them like eight seasons to pick four times in the first in the first round in the first round in recent iterations of this right. team. So um, overall, I think that it's, it's going to end up being great for the Nets in terms of adding awesome talent. I think it's just going to look a slightly different than we thought it was going to be when we started the season. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, uh, sorry, not Mikhail Bridges, just real quick. Carl Anthony Towns and uh, Jalen Brunson, they come in day to day. Ankle for Brunson and uh, knee contusion for Carl Anthony Towns coming to Friday's game. You mentioned it earlier, nine and a half spread. Uh, I'll go first because I keep I, I hate I hate always putting you on 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 the table. I'm uh, it's hard to come back to the well after what the Nets did or didn't do against the Boston Celtics. But uh, I think uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the Nets. I'm gonna take the Nets in the points in this one. I I don't. I'm curious to see how the Knicks come out. How much they maybe try to give Mikhail a bit of a moment against his former team if that matters at all. But I'm gonna take the Nets in this first one and then probably have him build up for a loss in the second one. I told you I'm Martin Gale and the Nets, uh, the Nets and the points uh, from here to the end of the season. I'm back to zero because they uh, because they, they got they, they, they got roasted by After the your big there, proclamation mate. last episode. I before the Boston game, I could I should have clearly gone the other way because once once either one of us, by the way, gets real conviction about something that's going to happen, it always goes the other way. All right, but I'm gonna start the I'm gonna start the run up again here. So I'm going here Nets right. plus nine and a half. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Love Much it. appreciate everyone rocking with us all season long. I'm sure there's gonna be folks watching the game tonight. Head over to Twitter. Adam and I are tweeting usually during the games. Definitely will be tonight in this Knicks game and Nets game at Doug Nori at Ar- Adam Armbrecht. Go follow us on Twitter. That's where the, that's where the live action is happening during the games. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to Locked On Nets. We live by a code, sir. Either we were right or we were wrong. We don't make deals. Now, that is Lance Corporal Harrod W. Dawson, but truly it was Aaron Sorkin from A Few Good Men. Ah, uh, an all time great movie and an all time great poet. That's it. Love that movie. It'll rewatch that one. That one's, uh, that one's a rewatchable. Every, every couple of years, you got to do go back to A Few Good Men. That's uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Cruise at, at the top of his game in that one, as far as I'm concerned. There we are. And yeah, one of the all-time great poets. We'll be back again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll lost there, yeah. Basketball, 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 basketball. Yeah.